metastatic melanoma is is melanoma that's spread from the place it started, which is normally in the skin, um, to other parts of the body. So normally when we talk about metastatic melanoma, we're referring to the fact that it spread to the lungs or the liver or the bones or, for example, internal lymph nodes. And the important thing to understand about metastatic melanoma um, or any cancer once it's spread is that unfortunately it's generally not possible to cure it so most of the treatments we use are to control the disease and to try to uh, control symptoms and to improve quality of life so that's the, the practical issue. There are about 12,000 cases of melanoma every year in the UK and it causes about 2,000 deaths and the thing about metastatic melanoma is, first of all, its incidence is doubling almost every decade. And the other thing that's worrying about the statistics in melanoma is that a third of the patients who die of metastatic melanoma are under the age of 50. So this is a disease that kills people uh, in the prime of their life, um, and it's a disease that is increasing in incidence across the UK. In the last 30 years, there really haven't been any significant changes in the way that melanoma is treated. The metastatic form of the disease continues to kill people. People really had started to wonder if perhaps melanoma is one of those diseases that simply cannot be treated and certainly cannot be cured. Now, we have these two new drugs which are available. The really exciting thing about that is that patients actually respond to these drugs and that has changed the paradigm of how we think about melanoma treatment. It's made us start to think that this disease is one that certainly can be treated and potentially even one that can be cured. A personalised medicine, say, to treat cancer is generally a drug that is targeted to a specific abnormality in the cancer. Um, and normally that's a, a molecular abnormality, something inside the cell that's driving the cancer and a drug that has been specifically targeted to that abnormality. And so a drug targeted to BRAF mutation in melanoma, for example, would be an example of a personalised medicine. The, the benefits of a personalised medicine are, are that the chances of responding to it are much higher than a, a medicine that wasn't personalised. So instead of taking uh, 100 people, let's say, and treating them and hoping that 10 or 20% are going to respond, you actually pick out the 10 or 20% people in advance with a test and just treat those 10 or 20 with the personalised medicine. That means that you're not treating the other 80 or 90% who are then, say, having side effects without any prospect of getting benefit um, and it also means that potentially the costs of medicines are more acceptable because you're targeting a particular group rather than treating a large group um, and hoping that some will uh, respond. The phase 3 clinical trial, um, BRIM3 for Vemurafenib, compared the drug with uh, a chemotherapy drug called the Carbazine which we've used since the 1970s to treat melanoma. And really the, the headlines are that the, the proportion of patients with significant tumour shrinkage was significantly greater in the vemurafenib arm in comparison with the decarbazine. And we also saw prolongation of control of disease and we also saw increased life expectancy. So that's the first time we've ever seen those things um, with a targeted treatment for melanoma. So, so that's a real landmark. And then in terms of safety, Vemurafenib does have side effects, um, rash, uh, joint pains, um, skin sensitivity in the sun. But what we've found is that those side effects are generally manageable, either by reducing the dose of the drug or sometimes top, stopping, it, uh, stopping it temporarily. Of course, it's very gratifying that the work that we did here at the Institute of Cancer Research is now being translated into patient responses in the clinic. We did the original biochemistry uh, following Mike, St Mike Stratton's discovery of the mutated gene that showed that BRAF was very important in the, in the cells in the melanomas where BRAF is mutated. We learned what BRAF is doing in those cells. We solved the crystal structure and then those data were used by others to make these drugs. And of course, we watched with great excitement and enthusiasm while that went through. And it's great to see that the work we did here at the Institute of Cancer Research is now translating into patient responses in the clinic, and I think we can be very pleased to watch that process.